A lawsuit targets Governor Abbott for one part of his plan to fight COVID-19. The governor is using taxpayer funds without going through the legislation. How the governor is responding to legal action from fellow Republicans. Researchers make progress on two different vaccines to fight COVID-19. How Texans are helping to get those doses ready to go. But first, our investigative team has two important stories you won't want to miss about the Texas Department of Transportation. Years after the agency promised to make changes following hundreds of allegations of worker discrimination and harassment, some employees tell us the problems have gotten worse. We'll have that update, but straight ahead. If Matt Schaefer has the wrong perspective on this, then I'd like to know that. Uh, I, I, you know, I wanna hear from them uh, in a public setting and uh, we'll see what happens. We uncovered more than $8 million in temporary pay raises for a single state agency, again, TxDOT. Hello, thank you for joining us for this special edition of State of Texas. I'm Josh Hinkle, and today we're talking about pay raises as millions of Texans were losing their jobs and the state's economy was taking a major hit all because of the pandemic. Hazard pay is usually reserved for things like law enforcement, but our Jody Barr found TxDOT actually gave those raises to civilian employees, and now a state lawmaker wants answers. It's a race to save these homes before it's too late. There's a lot of people that live in very substandard housing. These pictures show the shape of some East Texas homes before a $3 million state grant saved them. Habitat for Humanity in Tyler has used that taxpayer funded grant to save hundreds of homes belonging to poor and disabled Texans. Organizers fear state budget cuts could slash this grant from three to $1 million. At that point, that just puts them on a waiting list. And at that point, the problems with their house just get worse. Raymond Gideon's the construction manager for that group. He says he's already gotten word from the Capitol cuts are coming. It's less costly to society to allow these people to live in their homes. And at that point, when they can no longer live in their homes, where do they go? They have no place to go. My plea to them would be use some common sense. Representative Matt Schaefer is a member of the House Appropriations Committee. He knows he's got tough money decisions to make in January and told Gideon that the day of this interview. Schaefer got a tip in May that TxDOT had given what he calls pay raises to employees. He asked TxDOT about it and got this letter. It shows since the pandemic started in mid-March, TxDOT spent more than $8 million in hazard pay. I actually talked to other members of the committee who had not heard about it. Uh, and so it was done very, very quietly, uh, which, you know, uh, makes me wonder uh, what the true purpose of it was. I don't know of any other state agency that provided hazard pay like this. And we couldn't find one either. We filed requests with seven other state agencies where workers could likely be at higher risk of exposure to contracting the coronavirus because of the nature of their jobs. None of those agencies paid a dime in pandemic-related hazard pay. Not even the state's prison system, where more than 18,000 workers and inmates tested positive and 14 workers died. When we're balancing priorities in the state budget and how to use these tax dollars in the middle of an economic crisis, I just don't understand how any member of the legislature would vote to say, we're going to give extra hazard pay to textile workers outside and not correctional officers working inside a prison um, where they actually have serious COVID problems. TxDOT would not agree to an interview to explain the decision to spend these tax dollars. In a prepared statement, the agency said the payments went to employees working the front lines to ensure our main transportation corridors were operational. Just 10 days after Schaefer found out about the payments, still in the height of the pandemic, TxDOT ended the hazard duty payments. If the risk was justified in March, April, and May, then the risk should be justified in July. Maybe they have looked at the rationale behind this and says it doesn't make sense. It's not going to hold up to public scrutiny. Do you consider this waste and abuse of tax dollars? I consider it a lack of respect for how we go through a process to allocate tax dollars. This is not how we should be uh, handling money in the middle of a crisis. 
Well, TxDOT told me those payments stopped on June 1st simply because the state was reopening for the pandemic shutdown. The agency spokeswoman also said, though, this hazard pay money helped the agency start projects sooner and finish them quicker. But the records we saw on those projects from TxDOT shows that happened simply because traffic counts were much lower. Well, how long did Representative Schaefer think it would be before the legislature could take this up? Josh, he says that he plans to have TxDOT leaders right back here in front of his committee as soon as January when those legislators walk back through the doors of the Capitol. All right, Jody, thank you very much. Our TxDOT investigations continue coming up. Let's stand up in your face and tell you, you need to go back where you came from. You don't belong here. Finally got fed up with it and just went over the boss's head and did what I had to do. Allegations of discrimination and harassment against women and minorities inside one of the state's largest government agencies. After we first investigated two years ago, TxDOT vowed to make big changes. But today, some workers tell us the problems are worse. 